So we have created this class called Dice, and it has constructors and a destructor. It has getters and setters, and a roll method and a write dice method, and two private data members. Now, uh, this is we've been we've written it and we've played with it a little bit in Maine, and things are looking good. But there are some things that we need to be more careful about. So some things that we're going to change that will make this class more robust. So notice how the private data members or how the data members are private. And that's a really standard practice when creating classes is to make sure that the private the, the data members are private. And that is what that means is you don't give direct access to these va variables to anybody, to anybody who's using the class. The only ones that have access to it are the methods that belong to the class. And so the methods that belong to the dice class can access the data members, but somebody who's using it, so like somebody in Maine, cannot access those data members directly. Well, one of the reasons that we do that is so that we can create a data type and then we can make sure that that data type always had va has valid values. And so uh, that's a big part of creating a data type is making it robust so that somebody using it can't break it or make it uh, not work the way it is intended to work. And user people who use stuff will make mistakes and do things wrong. So we have to actually protect it to make sure that they can't make that kind of mistake. So let's look at how we're doing on that. This is the th this is one of the things we have not done. And when so let's look at our set method. So here we have set number of sides method, and uh, whoever's using it sends us a number for the number of sides, and we just assign that to our private data member. There's no supervision here. So they could send any number. In fact, let's go try that. Let's, here we've got um, a dice. Well, we have an array of dice, right? And here we rolled the dice that's the third one. Here's the third one in that array. And there's actually 12 in the array. Four where we uh, use the non-default constructor. And then the other eight would have used the default constructor. So we were able to roll it and then uh, and print out how number of sides. But let's go ahead and do a set. So my dice three. So this is the one in the array uh, dot. And let's set the number of sides and let's set it to negative two and see what happens. OK, and then we get C out number of sides. And let's go ahead and put a label here so we know what we're getting here. Um, number of sides in my dice three. All right, so there's the number of sides in my dice three, and we'll just print it out so we can see what it is. And here we've set it to negative two. Now, does negative two make sense for a dice? It doesn't. But let's see what happens when we do that. So we print it out, and what are the number of sides? Number in negative two is the number of sides. And it shows up down here when we print that array. We have a dice with negative two sides. So that is not OK. And uh, as the user of that, uh, we would be surprised if we were allowed to do that. It wouldn't make sense. And we'd go, that's not a, you know, that's a weird dice class if you can have a dice with negative two. So what we want to do is we want to supervise that. And, and what, so we need to determine what are allowed si numbers, values for a number of sides. So we know negative two is not one. What about zero? Does it make sense to have a dice with zero sides? It doesn't really. What about one? So a dice would be flat and couldn't be turned over, right? It would have to always be the same side up. And that doesn't seem really um, reasonable either because it would have another side. We just have to make sure it never got turned over. So that doesn't make sense either. It really looks like the minimum we could have for a dice would be a two-sided dice. And that would be a lot like a coin, right? And that would really be the smallest. So let's say that it couldn't ever be smaller than two. And then about how big could it be? Well, we know that there are 24-sided dice. What about 36? What about 48? Uh, 
And if we're doing this in a computer setting, right, some sort of virtual game, do we care how big the dice is? If we were going to have to build one, it could be limited in the number of sides. But if we're just playing a game, is there an upper limit? We could pick one, right? We could just say, oh, we're just not going to deal with anything bigger than 36 sides. Or we could say, oh, use it as big as you want. It will work theoretically, right? Or in a game, it would work no matter how big it gets. So you make it as big as you want. So let's just supervise the small end. And when we do this, then we for sure want to include our documentation. We include documentation anyway. But uh, let's go ahead and explain this so we know that we have this detail. This sets the number of sides for the dice. And number of sides is an integer that specifies the new, the number of sides on, on this dice. Yeah. And here's where we can say the um, number of sides must be two or greater. And there we've let them know what that parameter needs to be. It needs to be two or greater. And then, so number one, we've told them. And now we need to decide what are we going to do if it happens. So if the value that they've sent, which is number of sides, if that is less than two, what should we do? All right? here's where we get to decide. This is where we get to decide how do we manage it when this happens. And so... What do, what do we want to do? Well, um, how about if we just set it to the default number of sides, right? The six set of dice is the most common dice, and that's what we used in our default constructor. Let's just set the number of sides, and be careful to get the number of sides with the um, underscore as the end, because that's the private data member. We'll set that private data member equal to six. Because that, that's just our default value that we'll use. And if they send us something that doesn't work, we'll set it to six. And we know that that works. Otherwise, if it, you know, this is the case when it's not greater than two, so it's two or greater, then we can just use whatever it is they sent. So in one case, if it's less than two, we'll set it to the default that size of six. If it's not, then we'll just set it to whatever they sent. So there, in our set number of sides, we've supervised uh, what that number of sides can be. And let's go ahead and tell them, let's add a remark to let them know if the value sent is less than two, the number of sides will be set to six. And there we've told them what our plan is, right? And we determined what we wanted to do there, and now we want to include it in the documentation of how that's going to be handled when it happens.